Right, hammond's on the ball. Okay. Uh, okay, guys, tonight I'm going to be tying the, the Papa Roach. The, um, this is the second time I tied now at the Guild. The first time I tied it was, uh, I don't know how many years ago was that. I think it was about five years ago. Five, six years ago. The, the original pattern. Um, since then, the pattern's changed um, a little bit. Um, I, when, when I first started the pattern, it wasn't even published or anything like that when I first started the guild. So there was a few changes that happened. And, uh, and this, is, um, this has been now for the last couple of years, has been the, the, the way I tie it. Um, uh, you know, that I feel it's, uh, I want the pattern to look like. There's a lot of patterns in the shops. The guys tie a quick tie. I mean, Murray, they, they all tie a much quicker pattern, which is understandable because it's a little bit uh, tricky. You'll, as we go through the tie, you'll see that some, one, one technique is a bit tricky and it's time consuming. So, because they can pop these dragonflies out quite fast, that's why it's so popular. You know, the guys can just tie it in like, you can tie a dragonfly as fast as you can tie a strip loose or something, which in the past has never been the case because you always had to have these big hooks, tie in the eyes or burn these eyes, then build up this. And that's what took the, you'll see tonight, the biggest, the longest uh, step in this in tying, one of the longest steps in tying this pattern is actually just dubbing the head. Now you can imagine if you have to uh, size two hook that you've got to dub the whole abdomen on, how long that takes you, plus then the head, if you take in consider how long the dubbing of the head takes. So that's why in the past, dragonflies, uh, tied dragonflies were quite fast, uh, slow, or tedious. But then, um, you know, guys came out with, uh, um, this, for instance, the dragon bugger by, by um, Andy Berg, which is a much quicker tie. Um, there's, uh, these are similar patterns to what I'm doing. Um, then there's also the pattern, um, the Janssen Dragon, which is almost similar to this, but it's very, it's a very tedious tie. It's a very long tie because of the fact that you've got to trim the marabou body. Um, the reason I designed the fly, just to go back now, you know, what my thinking was initially when I tied the fly is um, I wanted to create a dragonfly. I, didn't, I don't fish dragonflies much. I hardly ever fish them. But I thought, you know, if I were going to design a fly, it would be so cool to, to imitate a dragonfly. And because in Africa, that's basically probably the biggest food item that... We have, it's something substantial. Um, it's something that if, uh, most people fish on still waters. Um, and uh, um, I saw the similarity in Zonka strips and everything, but it, it didn't come about simply because of the Zonka strip. And I, you know, I've done this tie, I started tying this thing almost 10 years ago. So um, I couldn't really remember why I came to, to tie it the way I did. But then I uh, spoke to Gordon Spay the other day, and uh, Gordon from Spay, and we were talking about salmon flies. And I remember at the time, I was really intrigued by the way they would, um, they, the people would tie uh, salmon flies and how they would tie in the materials to sort of create this very um, streamlined um, fly and how uh, the um, materials almost encase each other. So it's, a, it's almost like a process of building something. So the pattern really isn't uh, something that you're going to tie just to imitate something. It's, it's, a, it's almost like an engineered pattern in a way. It's every, every, uh, every part of this fly uh, serves a purpose. Um, the reason why I think the pattern is successful the way it is is because of the, of the way it's tied and, and similar patterns. I mean, the dragon bugger and the answer dragon are similar to these. It's the fact you can fish them really slowly. They're not like other dragon patterns. What happens with other dragon pack patterns, especially if you tie them on very long hooks, is because of the, the amount of metal and then also the, the bend of the hook. You have, if you stop, if you throw a fly in the water, or if you just stop the retrieve, the fly will tilt. So the, your, your dragon will hang with his ass down like this. The dragon really doesn't look like that when he's in the water. It sits horizontal. Um, and this pattern actually swims horizontal because of the, the, the first strip at the back here. It acts as a parachute. Uh, initially, I tied them on, on longer shank hooks, but then I, I reduced the, 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 sh the shank length, um, just extending the body further. It doesn't really make much, much difference. Um, um, and, and the hook cape obviously got bigger, uh, but it's, it's offset by this long tail here, even though the, the, the wire of the bend is quite heavy. It's a heavy wire size 6 short sand hook, so it's basically like a wet, wet fly hook. And it acts as a keel to the fly, so if you throw this fly in the water, it will naturally swim. It, it won't tilt or do anything. This, this thing acts as a keel. If you, and if you soak it up and you put it in the water, it will slow, it'll tilt slowly and then it will start gliding off. off. looks like something that is just, it just goes by itself. And it doesn't sink to the bottom, really. It just floats along. Um, if you tie it correctly, you'll see, you, you, um, like Gary was saying on, on, earlier on this evening, if you throw this thing in the water, it'll float. If you wet the first drip completely wet and you throw it in the water, it'll still float. You have to actually cast it quite hard, get all the air out of this wing case, and then it'll sink. So um, it's got a lot of, uh, you know, natural buoyancy in it. So it sinks very slowly. And I think that's one of the reasons why it's so successful, and the way they fish it. You know, they fish it really slow. Um, 
it's a very simple fly to tie. It's not that difficult. I've seen like atrocious abominations, but and it's got um, very few materials, you know, that that needs to be tied in. I think there's altogether there's one, two, three, four, five, six, six materials plus the hook. But um, I'm just going to go through them, and if you must just when you when you select materials for the tie, you must just select the correct materials, and it's, it's kind of important that you do that. First of all, I'm going to do the abdomen. If you if you select the the abdomen for the the first step for the abdomen, make sure that you pick uh, what they refer to as a variegated. Um, where is it now? Here it is. It's a it's a variant. Which basically means that what they do is they cut the first strip of this specific uh, zonker strip off the back of the rabbit, not off the belly. Because a lot of times you get like uh, just uh, white uh, farm raised rabbits, you know, and they got long fur, they're fluffy, and they chop those things up for, for fur. You want more like a, a almost like a wild rabbit, with a, and and on the back is more, a lot more guard hairs. And the guard and the and the and the fur on the back of the of the rabbit isn't always as long as those on the belly or on the other parts of the um, rabbit. So you have two things now. You you basically get a, a nice a variegated uh, uh, coloring, even if they die. You're still going to have these different colors. This this one isn't very um, variegated, but the the other. If you get the proper ones, you, you, I'm sure you guys know what I'm talking about. It's almost as if the rabbit strip's got three colors in it, and the guard tips are a different color. So you get a mottled effect on top. Nowadays, you even get barring. This one specifically has got barring, but, you know, um, as long as you get the very good. And also, the, the second thing, well, even the most important thing, even if your uh, rabbit is first strip is only one color, is you must make sure that the fibers of the, of the hairs, I try and get them as short as possible. I actually open up packets, and I go through. I look for the first strips with the shortest uh, fur on them, just to get the, you don't want it too long a fur, otherwise the thing just flies all over the place, it looks more like a bait fish. That's the first thing. Then secondly, you want to get um, your mallard flank that you're going to get, okay? The, 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 the original pattern came about because I had a packet of mallard flank that was really like floor sweepings, it wasn't the original proper mallard flanks. Uh, the original mallard flanks are something like this. This is what the mallard flank feathers are. That you that you get in mallard uh, packs. You're not looking for that. You're basically looking for something like this. It's way shorter. Okay, this is on the other extreme. These ones are too they are too cupped and they are a little bit too strong. You're looking for something that's a, in between. This is more. Let me just find a perfect one quickly. Here we go. This is more the kind of feather that you're looking for. So you're looking for you go through the packs. Just open them up. I, look, I open them up. I look for packs that got a lot of these smaller feathers in because the guys think these are the second grade, so they don't really. Uh, put too many of them in because the guys want those long feathers and you really want this. This is what you want. You want the shorter feather. And the reason why I use mallard is because of the stem. You can see how it's curved. The stem of the mallard uh, feather is quite um, robust and strong. You can use um, other feathers as well. For instance, um, uh, what do you call it? Partridge works well, but only some of the partridge feathers. You just got to look for this bigger and stronger uh, partridge feathers and you can, uh, get your partridge, you can use that as well. Then um, the other material Oh, very, very important is the, is the eyes. They don't sell these eyes normally in the shops, but you get them in the haberdashery shops. Okay? If you don't get these eyes, you should already start out. That's what the biggest problem I see with all commercial patterns. Unless they have the correct eyes, don't even bother starting. Because the, the head of a dragonfly is a fifth of its overall body length. You're not even making an impact. Then you can well, might as well tie a strip leech. So if you don't have eyes this size, it's called large bee chain, then don't, don't tie the pattern, you know, the tie, tie, rather tie a strip leech, because the eyes will never make a, be the correct proportions of the dragonfly. So those, that's very important, that you have the correct eyes. Um, and then the dubbing up front, <coughs> that you use for dubbing the head, um, I've got a blend here. Normally what I do is um, I, uh, I blend um, natural, uh, natural dubbing, which is fine, like, like, uh, like a rabbit, uh, and a bit of synthetic. You, want, you don't want spiky dubbing, because you want a nice smooth head, so you don't want any... Uh, too much spiky fiber sticking out. You want to smooth and round it off. Okay, and and, uh, and lastly, the legs. The legs aren't that important. Um, what kind of materials you use? I use Spanflex. This is from a bass layer, basically. But you can use um, you can either use rubber or Spanflex for the legs. It doesn't really matter as long as they sort of in line with the with the coloration of the of the dragon. And the and the colors that you pick is, is basically up to you. I normally tie with these uh, with a with an olive and and a, and a dark olive. You can do brown. I, I hear from Murray and then they say that the golden brown variant is excellent. It's almost like a, like a hazier color type of color. I think in winter it, it fishes well. So, um, so you, can, you can do other colors. And you just got to fit the materials to those, to those shades. 
Okay, so I'm gonna start talking now. The hook I use is a, um, is a Kamagatsu S102S, but you can use any size 6, um, wet fly, one egg short, or you can use an 8 that's a, like a nymph hook, it'll give you the same shank length, just about. But I like a big guy. The fish don't normally take this fly short. You know, if this is, they come and they swallow the damn thing completely, up to their gills, uh, up to their throats. If they take it short, it's because you've been stripping it, and it works well. But <laughs> it, it's not really fishing as a dragon then. You can, you can use a strip leech as well. Dan was saying how, how while it works at some stages that, uh, you know, we're stripping this thing and it, uh, catching fish with it. The thing is, um, when you're dealing with, uh, I found this as a technique that you use for uh, freshly stocked fish. Um, when you've got stockfish in the dam, um, it all, this always depends on what mood they're in. So sometimes the guys go with a blob to get them to take. And sometimes a woolly bugger also works well. But um, strip leeches with a bit of a, a hot spot in it somewhere works exceptionally well stripped for, for freshly stocked fish, especially if they're still schooling. Um, at a, and, and they're schooling at a certain depth. And I think the reason for that is because of the fact that a strip leech never really sink fast out of the out of the um, the layer of, of depth that it's in, and that's why they work so well. I've had phenomenal fishing with fishing with strip leeches. So, um, but this is not you know the papa roach doesn't. I've I've done it. I've I've fished the papa roach where stockies have bashed it, and and I know it's why they eat it because they think it's just something big. They don't really eat it as a dragonfly. I'm sure they don't know what the dragonfly is. Okay, so the eyes I'm gonna I'm gonna tie in. Let me just get back to that. You'll see now. The eyes are uh, connected with a piece of string through the plastic. Now, you can tie, you tie them in normally like you do with a normal uh, bead chain or any other kind of eyes. But because of the, the, the thread that you have going between the two, you want to make the eyes stand proud. So what you're going to do is you actually take a few wraps off. Um, can you see there? Yeah, you can see. Okay. So you, can, you actually take a few wraps of thread around, around every eye like that. So that makes the pushes the eyes out, so they stand proud. Okay. And I'm going to tie it back. I'm just going to place it at the tying point. There you go. So that's the distance be behind the, the hook eye. Leave yourself a little bit of space there to tie off. Again, okay, then you, what you're going to do is okay. I'm going to just correct it. Otherwise, you're going to have a problem here. You can, you can do a lot of thread wraps around this because um, the head's a big bulky thing. So if you build up a thread underbody with it, it's fine. In the eyes. Okay, then I'm just going to make them, position them, and use a bit of super glue just to glue them into position. So they don't twist. Okay, so now that you've got your eyes in the position, I'm going back to the tight point over there. Okay, the first strip that you're going to be using, um, just cut yourself a generous, not too much, you, know, you don't need much more than you would need for, the, for a zonka. That's about the, the distance. Don't worry too much about, I'll show you guys later on, don't worry too much about the back of the first strip that you have to tie in the correct length when you, when you, when you tie in it first. Um, you must just have more or less have the length. The, 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 the most important thing is that the, the, the base of the first strip is, is, long, is quite long out the back. Um, so you, it's not going to be like a zonka where I'm going to measure my tail by the... Oh, this thing is so kinked. It's not going to be like a zonka where I measure the length by the, by the, tip of the, uh, the tips of the fur at the back here. I'm actually going to measure the length of my abdomen almost by the length of the actual um, skin at the bottom here. So you can tie your, you can tie your tail in a little bit too long, or your, your first strip. And the, the way I tie it in is I'm going to just take the strip, the fur now, over my finger, and then I'm just going to use a, a, a needle and just uh, 
clean up a little area there. It's just not. It's just so I don't trap any fur fibers when I tidy. And at the back, it's very simple. You just tie it in here at the back. Okay. Now, very important. You. This is the weakest point in the fly. If you take a few fish with it, this is where the fly is going to come undone. So make sure that you take a few wraps um, behind the strip. A few again in front of the strip. And then again through, through the middle. Okay, so there's your dragon now. Okay. <clears throat> now I'm going I'm to do this now. I normally do it at the end, but this, I'm going to do it now so we don't... So you guys don't forget about it. Um, basically, there's, that's the abdomen of your dragonfly. Now, abdomen of a dragonfly is normally quite blunt and everything. It's not as, as, as sharp as this, as this uh, point of fur is indicating because this is basically what it will do in the water. So what you do is you just take your fingertips and you just nip out the long, loose fibers at the back there. So basically, I'm going to start over there and I'm just going to nip out a few fibers. And I'm create this uh, much shorter, see there, I've got a much shorter blunt tail that I've done with it now. And that's the, uh, the, the back of the abdomen. If you feel it's too long, you can always cut it again a, bit, a piece off of the skin and, and nip it out. Okay, now coming to the front, <coughs> now you run your thread up to about halfway along the hook, along the hook shank, up to about there. And you take a few of these fibers to the front here. So that's why it's important to use a slightly longer piece of fur, just to have a bit of a, get a hold of this over there. So I've got it over there. And then I'm going to just tie it down. I would say on the hook shank, it's almost halfway. Of, you, you guys can see there now. If you guys can see. It's almost halfway the length of the hook shank on the, on the, on the, on the side. You see there? With the first uh, tie down ease. And then you come forward. Okay, now very important. When you cut now your piece of skin, cut it so that it, um, I'm, you must cut it so that it lies flush. It must, it must sit right behind the eyes here. It must actually sit in the, right there. Otherwise, when, you'll see with the next technique when we come to the, to putting in the, 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 the wing case or the scut feathers, that it, uh, you'll have a difficulty with the technique there. So just trim it so it sits just behind the eyes. No, actually, there you go. You can actually, I, I've tied mine, on, I can even cut it now a little bit too short. You almost want the little first strip to push into the, onto the thread there that divides the eyes there. Right in between the eyes. Okay, then just tie that down with... Um, Okay, so there's your, so basically that's your, the, the dragonfly, so that, you know, that already has saved you a hell of a, a lot of time just doing an abdomen of a dragonfly. Now the stuff, I, I call it the heart of the fly, um, it's just something that I do um, to fill the gap underneath the scut feathers, is I, I take uh, either UV ice dub, um, this one's got some blend of polar, uh, polar dub in as well, and I'm just going to loosely dub, dub it on here. You don't, you don't have to really, that's it, that's about as what it looks like. It doesn't really, it's not even on the thread, but it's so fine. The thread will go over it and through it. So there. Basically what you want to create is this effect. Take a dubbing, your, your needle, and you just brush it out now. So you have this kind of effect underneath your... Um, your feathers. Just make sure one thing, don't do it. You can see I left a bit of a gap between the dubbing that I've done and where, the, where I tie down the fur. If you do it right on top of the, where your first thread starts um, on, the th on the fur, the, what the, the effect this will have, it will actually squash your furs, uh, fur, fur fibers down on your, on your pattern so that it won't move. Because you want this stuff still, even though it's uh, going to be Controlled, you still want these 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 fears that you can't see. 
You won't see them now on, when, on the finish fly, but they will still be moving underneath the feathers. So you want that, you want to keep that movement. And if you put this too close to the fur, basically what you'll do is you'll just constrict the movement of the fur, and you don't want that. So you, you do it a little bit in front of the fur. And then if it looks a bit ugly, don't worry, because it's going to get all covered up anyway. There you go. So, so this is what you end up with. Like now, a little bit of a wing like that. Okay, now this is the most important part of the fly. Because the rest of the fly is very straightforward, very simple. So you're looking for, for these kind of feathers. You guys can see. Now you'll see this, if you look at this feather, you'll see that it actually, it, it's bent up like that. It's got a, it's got a, it's, it shows you on which side it's going. So I can't, I don't want to put it on this side because then my feather will be bending down. But if I put it on, on this side, my feather actually curves up. And what you want to do with these feathers is you, if you tie them in, you, you don't want them to sit like a Mrs. Uh, Simpson or a Hamill's killer, like this on, on the side of the fly. They're actually going to, they're going to tilt up and they're going to roll over the fly so that they, they, they cover basically what they do is they, they cover the top half of the fly. So basically what I'm going to do is the feather wants, I want the feather to do that type of thing and still be, and then tilt up when I'm doing it. Okay, so you select yourself four, four, I use four feathers. You can do two if you want, if they're quite strong. Um, if you have very big feathers, um, they, like this, this is no good. Those, those tips are not strong enough to control anything, and they'll, they'll splay all over the place. They're not, uh, they're not strong enough to do any, because this is actually a, 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 a structural function that this feather has to fulfill, and these things are useless. So don't use feathers like this. Also, don't use feathers that's this, you can use ones this small, but if they're this, if they're this heavily curved, they push a lot. And so what they'll do is they'll, they'll really push in on the fur on the side here. So you'll have a, it's, it's not that bad, you know, it still will, will do the trick. It will do it quite well, but it actually will really push in hard on the, on the, on the, on the, on the fur of the dragonfly. You don't really want that. You want it a little bit like that. I mean, you, you can half fix it by just running a nail on the outside of it because you decrease the curve slightly. On, on this side, if you, if you yeah, yeah, yeah. If you, but but then you're going to break your fibers a bit, and you'll see. You could, yeah, yeah, see. You yeah, you could, you but you can. Along yeah, yeah. on this side. Yeah, you see, but then you break the the, the fibers yeah. up a bit slightly. So what I do, if you have small feathers like this, are great. They are very very good for construction, and they really constrict the 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 um, the, 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 the the thorax. If 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 they're this short. Normally what I do is when I tie in these feathers now, I'm going to tie them so that they, you can see where the hook shank is. So that they're just about where the hook bend is. So they're just past the hook bend, the tips of the, fur, uh, the feather. So it's about, about the length, uh, at the, 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 the distance of the hook bend, the back here. Um, that's more or less what I wanted. If you've got really small feathers and they're really strong, then all you do is you just reduce the, the, the length. You don't tie them so far back. That you just let them do the front section over here. Okay, so... In prepping the feathers, I'm just going to use any feather you know. And this is nice. Okay, so you can see naturally this one wants to curve up like this. Got a time in there. So what I do is I take the feather. So now I've got something like that now. Now to so basically it's going to sit like that there. What I do now is I shorten the bottom section to about there. See, I, I, I just pull some fibers off the. It's about there. Okay. So that's what I'm going to do. And, the, and I'm going to tie it in over there, like that. Let me just do my, my one. On, I normally do the one on my side first. This helps me to orientate them. Just going to get another feather out here. That's why I brought uh, three packets of these mallard flanks because you guys have to just filter through them. But I, I found a, but the, these are these packets are pretty good. They got in general very nice feathers. Okay, so again you see this is about the size feather that I want. If you tie lots of these flies, you create a hell of a mess. All these feathers you're stripping. So when you tie in the feather, it's just all you do is you just take two two wraps. Now what I've done is, if you guys can see that I've ta I've taken the feather, um, tied it in. The stem is over the hook eye like this. 
So what I'm going to do now, so you see it works nicely on the side now. I've, you guys saw when I first started in, the stem was on top of the hook, uh, on top of the eye. All you do is you, you take your finger, you hold the feather in place so it doesn't uh, pull around too much, and then you take the stem over here, and you just pull it through underneath the eye. And by doing that, you automatically cock this feather into the correct position. It's done. Now the feather is perfectly it's supposed to be. It's supposed to be. So as you can see, there's no fibers of this feather underneath. It's over here. It's a, this is exactly this is what you're trying to create. You want no feather um, underneath the hook shank. You want it in line with the hook shank. If you end up with a few feathers underneath it, just chop them off if they're, if they're overhanging. Because this is what you're essentially after. You don't want anything underneath this, the shank. You want everything above. And, and you can see here the, the, the feather is actually curled over the and covered half the, half the top. It's basically in the center of the, of the top of the fly now, the feathers. So it's creating this a half a tent, actually. actually. So uh, this, I think this is the other feather. And this is the one I stripped. So you just take the same, do the same on this side. Am I still in focus, John? I hope so. I've, I've, I've moved. Where's the little stick? There we go. No, that's fine. This is fine. Yeah. Okay. I must put my clothes on now. Forgot. So basically, I do the same again. Um, I just want to show you guys what I did. This is how I place the feather before I even start tying it now, because with my thread I'm going to roll it now. I put the feather basically uh, almost on top, and then I'm going to roll it over to the side. See there. Now see how the feathers are below the, the below the fly. Take your stem. Actually, just look there. So you cock up completely. There you go. See, I tilted up now because I pulled the stem below the below the eye. This one's a bit badly tied, and I didn't tie my first strip all the way tight to the eye, so I've got this little gap there that I don't want to rest on. Okay, but leave it there. I'll do the second one. Yeah, if you put a few th uh, thread, thread traps there, otherwise you're gonna have. You you see that it folds in there. Yeah, you don't want. Yeah, 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 and it breaks up a bit and everything. So just fold that gap there behind the eye. You want it folded. I'll do a second. You can even do three, four. It doesn't matter if it's you, you do it until it looks good. You know, you can put a few feathers. I normally, like I said, I only put two in. Let's see, it might, might work better now because the gaps fold. And see there, I've put it in behind, the, below the eye. See there, and it tilted up again. Okay, so I've done this side. I'm going to do my side. In one more. So um, you can see on this side how, how, how those feathers stand up. They stand up quite high. Can you see they, they stand up quite high like this. But don't worry about that because that's how they, what they're supposed to do. What, ha what will happen when this flies in the water, this, the abdomen will automatically... I'll put it on like this again. The abdomen is gonna, automatically going to come up like this. So it'll, it'll, it'll fill up this, this. You see there's almost like a gap there. There's like, a, it's like, there's like nothing underneath this whole hollow there. But it's fine because it'll fill up with the, with the fur. And you're going to squash it down a little bit now as well. Now what you do at this point, after you've tied them all and you can see all the stems are there, you just take your stems and you pull them underneath your eyes now. And then I just tie them off on the front. Over there. Okay. 
Okay, and th that is the most that th that that's the most difficult part of the fly. The rest is like so pretty straightforward. If you've got any any feathers underneath you, like here, that hangs, all you do is you just slip them out. If there's any fibers there, you just take, stick your scissors in there and just take those fibers out. Now I'm going to work back a bit and push this, uh, secure these feathers. Yeah, tight. I squash it all down. Mm. You see, like for instance, you see, there's some feathers there that's a little bit underneath, but they'll probably stay there. If you if you do want to cut, you can just stick your uh, see for instance there now. I'll just uh, show this. Side. If you do want to cut, you just stick your feathers in there, and you cut the there. Just cut those fibers off. And it doesn't hang on the bottom. Okay. And there's a. That's that's a fly. And if there's any loose feathers sticking out, you, uh, fibers, you might want to trim it. You don't really have to. It doesn't matter that much. Okay. Now the now the the legs. I don't. You know the the guys that the the, the commercial roach. The the legs are where the legs of a dragonfly are supposed to be. But because of the way we tie in these feathers, it sits up like this and creates this volume towards the top, um, like that. Is is because. Um, so you can't put uh, f uh, legs where they're supposed to be over here. Otherwise, you'll have uh, legs filing all the time. So I basically just make the legs come out of the head. Um, and that way they stay out of the way of the hook um, and don't never file when you cast. And the fish don't mind. There you see the legs dangling there. So basically what you do with the legs is you, you take your thread, put your piece of uh, rubber over it, and then just place it. Don't place it underneath, uh, like really underneath there. Rather place it sort of um, right on the side or slightly above the eye, you know, right about there. And you leave yourself a little gap between the, where, where you've stopped here, just over there, you leave yourself a little gap because you're going you're gonna to put uh, dubbing there to let these legs stand out proud. So two wraps, and then I just do it on the same on the other side. Okay, now you come with your now you come back with your thread after you've secured your legs, you come back with your thread behind the legs there. Okay. And now the dubbing starts. Can you sideways hand? <coughs> See like that. So basically what happens with this pattern, um, it, it, in the vice it looks really crappy. This pattern doesn't look great in the vice because you don't see the effect that, the, that, that, that what's going to happen in the water. What happens in the water is this, this bottom section here, the skin here, um, actually expands slightly. You know, it sucks up the water and expands. And all this, the back fur at the back here, this fur fibers here, they'll all start spreading out as well. So they create this big, much more bulbous abdomen at the back, and then which narrows into the head, which is exactly what the, what the dragonfly's um, silhouette looks like. Um, now you just do the dubbing. <coughs> okay, the dubbing you, the, the dubbing noodle that you want to form is a very um, sort of smallish but very compact um, dubbing noodle. Don't put a lot of dubbing on. Rather, just you know, just take more turns around the hook through the head. Uh, and that way you secure the dubbing quite tightly onto the head. Um, I had some dubbing here. I don't know what happened here anyway. Take this right here. Just uh, break the fibers a little bit so shorter than what's in this lot here. And you can make a long dubbing noodle because you're going to be dubbing a lot. Okay, so your first, your first uh, dubbing uh, foundation you lay behind your legs to make them stand out proud, and then you come in between the legs. 
You don't have to dub too much because you've, you've put so many thread layers already on, on underneath where the legs are tied on now that you've basically built up uh, the back part of the head quite significantly. Okay, now I'm going to go through figure of eight just to cover the section between the, the head now. Come around and I do two wraps of figure of eight there. That pretty much um, fills the the gap of the, you see this is a very small little piece is still um, open. <coughs> so what people normally do when they when they create dragon wrecks, they'll carry on doing figure of eights until they filled up everything. But you're going to create so much bulk there that your head's going to be too big. So in order to avoid that, and with these big eyes, what you do now is you basically pick an eye here. You basically start going around the eye. Okay, just gonna get some more dubbing on. <coughs> and you just fill up the space between uh, the hook shank and, the, and this eyeball with dubbing. And try and put more, more of your dubbing there. Most of your dubbing there. This is a great intro for the finish of the fly. Ta da! It's gonna finish now. Get my uh, scissors in the way all the time. See, that's about um, um, as much you don't fill up the head too much. You don't have to create this big bulbous round thing. You just want it sort of to, uh, flat and, and wider instead of big. Uh, instead of around and then you just simply tie off the front here Um, what I've done with this fly um, is I've um, actually um, put the eye slightly uh, too far back. Normally, I, I hardly ever, you'll hardly see the, the a little thread hit there. But it doesn't really matter. A, a dragonfly's got almost like a little nose in front of his eyes as well. So if it's there, it's not really a problem. And then um, all you have to do now is just make, got to make sure that your fibers, like for instance on this side, you'll see there's a few fibers there that's underneath the body. Like that, and I just trim them off. Because you want nothing underneath the underneath the, the the fly, basically. The only only area where there's um, tying underneath the hook shank is on the head itself. The rest of the hook shank is almost uh, bare. And then <coughs> then you when you finish now and you have got the proportions and everything, you're not happy with your with your tail or your length. You you can nip it out with your fingers again of the tail. I'd rather leave the tail slightly longer than than, than too short. You know, um, it just creates a nicer um, overall effect. And the legs, I'm, I cut the legs basically the same length. If you take your legs now and you put them up, up above the fly, the same length as the feather, as the, with, the, with these uh, um, mallard flank feathers end it. And then you can just trim it a little bit uneven over here. And then when I'm on the water and these, and these, and these legs foul, then I cut them shorter until they stop fouling, basically. And that's what you do. Then you just put a little bit of uh, super glue here. And then what I also do is, um, just to make strength in them, because it's happened with a few of them, after taking a few fish, uh, th that thread wrap over there uh, comes loose. So you just put a bit of super, super glue at the back here. And that's a proper roach. Oh, guys, one more thing. The most important thing about fishing this fly, you have to fish it with a loop knot or non-slip mono loop. Because if you don't, every time you retrieve it, it'll, it'll tilt. The eyes creates uh, resistance. 
So every time you pull the fly, maybe not all flies, but you, you tend to want your fly will do it. Every time you pull the fly, it'll just tilt on its side. So if you, you if you pull with a loop knot, it'll just it'll never t turn on its side. It'll always be right in the water.